Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your OC Joe Two and Love. Here we're with episode number one twenty eight of Sports Overview Topics. Got a bunch to go over today on the podcast, including college football, the college football playoffs, going over that. Um NFL week three thirteen, excuse me, week fourteen previews. Got that to talk about. Um, Baker Mayfield and the Rams. I give my touch on that. Vaughn Miller. Aaron Judge resigning with the Yankees. Go over that as well. Like I said, a bunch go over uh, to the podcast. So that's how I waste too much time. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're new to the podcast and you want to see more, uh, sports related sports overview topics videos click the subscription down in the corner um take all videos to the home page click the subscription as well as the notification bell find out where i actually post my videos live so find those and let's get out of the way too much and let's dive into it shall we so, for college football to start off, so, going into Friday, and this weekend rather, the top six were as follows, Georgia 1, Michigan 2, TCU 3, USC 4, Ohio State 5, Alabama 6. So, you had a feeling that Georgia and Michigan, regardless of the Big Ten, SCC, were pretty comfortable and pretty safe. For their spots. TCU and. USC. You had. Little worries about. Because of the committee. And so on and so forth. So. Okay. So. You're thinking. TCU versus Kansas State. TCU doesn't get embarrassed. They win. It's close. You know, they probably get in. USC was the only one you felt that they win and they're in. If not, okay. You're going to have to look. So, the start of the domino pieces started on Friday night. USC, Utah, Pac-12 Championship. How I fair. Well, at first it seemed like, you know, USC was going to have their way. I mean, it was 17 to 3. Caleb Williams and the offense of USC was rolling. And it looked like Utah was going to have to play catch up. And then Caleb Williams takes a bizarre hit when he's lying to the ground. And then all of a sudden, one play after, two plays after, a couple plays after, you know, 
you see he's limping, you know, his ankle. Because we know Caleb Williams, arguably the most exciting player currently in college football. You know, one of the big pieces of his is his mobility. And so you just felt that Bit of him was off, and really didn't feel the same. And you know, missed throws, three and outs. Utah's defense buckled down, and they got some good runs, and Utah just kept driving. And driving, and you know, they really won the time possession battle. I mean, only four drives for Utah in the first half. And Utah just kept turn, turn the clock, turn the clock, turn the clock. Tied at halftime, and I mean, 30 to 7 in the second half. Walmart could say Utah, Cameron Rising played a very good game, very good. And yeah, if I have to compare. Give a solid comparison for Caleb Williams. He looks like to me a mix of Kyler Murray and Dak Prescott, if I have to say. Just the way he looks and the way he plays, I mean, it's a strange but really good comparison. Because, I mean, his mobility, we know how explosive he is. We know he has a good arm. I mean. But, it's a shame that excuse me, this close USC was to making the playoffs. First Pac-12 team to make it since probably Washington or Oregon a number of years ago in the playoffs and they just fall short. Now it's a shame, but I don't want to discredit because, you know, look, Lincoln Riley, in his first year, what he did with this Trojans team cannot be understated because, you know, he brought Caleb Williams, Jordan Asson, you know, their philosophy of offense really changed and really for the better. And yes, it all sh- fell short. Yes, they had chances, but it was a solid season. And, you know, not the ending they wanted, but. Heads up for USC and the Trojans as they got a bright future. And especially with the 12 team expanded college football playoffs that coming sooner rather than later. Perhaps it's another wrinkle 
to get excited about for the Trojans. So they were the first domino to fall. So it's like, okay. You look at how the other championship games look as far as the top four. See how it goes. So. TCU versus Kansas State. First of all, mad respect to Kansas State. I mean, Deuce Vaughn is a real stud at running back. I mean, what he was able to do running the ball and also some receptions out of the backfield. Very good. Deuce Vaughn had a hell of a day for Kansas State. And it was a tricky game for TCU all till the end. But TCU fought back, fought back. Max Duggan cannot help but respect him. You know. Him just taking over the game at the end with his legs just to get them to tie the game late and send it to overtime. I mean, kudos to him and kudos to TCU. They were able to tie the game late. 28-28. Then it became overtime. And this is when the controversy really took place. So, of course, with college rules are different than overtime rules. So, they were able to get down to the five. And then Max Suggin again went for another run. But was called just short. Just short. At probably the two inches line. Or so. And. By Max Duggan. And then they call. Two straight run plays. Not by. Max Duggan. But to the running back. Stop twice. I mean, of course, with college rules in overtime, it's dicey because, you know, no matter what, the other team gets another possession. So they opted not to go for the field goal. On fourth down to at least take the lead. I mean, just drop controversy. Um, JJ Watts saw the game. He was obviously pissed and livid about the call. Call it ridiculous. You know, having it, them not run it with Max Duggan, not even sneak it. To go for the touchdown. I mean. Yeah. And it cost them. They got no points. Allowing. Kansas State just to win with a field goal. And they capitalized. Got it done. Close to Kansas State. But yeah. TCU fought hard. They just didn't get it done at the end. Then, short, not that it really mattered too much, but Georgia took care solidly of LSU. Although I must say, 
Garrett Nussmeyer of LSU made some solid throws, made some good throws. Credit they were mostly in open in garbage time, but dude has an arm and cools him. I mean, Jalen Daniels. Clearly was banged up. Clearly was not 100%. But he fought as hard as he could. And yeah, 50 to 30. The Bulldogs took care of it and won the SEC. And then on Saturday night, Michigan, it was a bit of a fight. Throughout, but Michigan pulled away to take take care of Purdue. The boiler makers were not the spoiler makers, as Michigan won their second straight Big Ten title. I mean, McCarthy again made some saw throws. Donovan Edwards taking a good role after Blake Corum out for a season. This team again is probably better than last year's team was. I mean more wins, you know, more explosive pass plays. I mean, probably tougher on the defense, despite no Hutchinson, no Ajabo, like last year, but still, is a tough, tough team. So how would the final dominoes be set? I mean, even Nick Saban, they had lobby for his team in halftime of the Big Ten title game. Which rubbed, obviously, people the wrong way. But you get it as a Alabama recruiter. But other than that, I mean... Just rub people in the wrong way. And in the end, how it shook up. Georgia won. Michigan two. TCU stays at three. Ohio State in at four. So. And USC fell to all the way to ten. Number 10. So, in the end, on New Year's Eve, it will be Georgia, number one, versus number four, Ohio State. Very interesting game. Very interesting. In the Peach Bowl. I mean, how good can CJ Stroud and Marvin Harrison Jr. be against that Georgia Bulldog defense? It's going to be a solid test. It's going to be a solid test. Same for Georgia. Said some bad Brock Bowers. I mean, I forgot the name of that receiver, but yeah, it's going to be a solid game all around between Georgia and Ohio State. And now on the other side, 
Number two, Michigan versus number three, TCU. Michigan, I think, can definitely win the national championship this year. They are, they got the tools. Explosive quarterback, very good run game, tough defense. I mean, Will Johnson, the job he has done at corner cannot, as a freshman, cannot be understated, cannot be understated. But TC is going to have something to say about it. And it's going to be a joy to watch on New Year's Eve. It's going to be fun. I mean, no matter how it goes, whether it's Georgia, Michigan, which is assumed turnout, or you have a Big Ten rematch, Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, TCU, or Ohio State, TCU. I mean, that would be unique in of itself. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. On to recap of NFL Week 13. Another unique week, to say the least. 10, 4, and 1 in my picks. 10, 4, and 1. I mean, we had another time, if you can believe it. I mean, for anyone who picks games, I mean, pretty much a tie is, again, better than a loss, but it's still strange to put up on the record. So, two ties this year. One from week one. One from week 13. But yeah. So, start with NFL week 13. On Thursday, the Bills beat the Patriots in Foxborough 24 to 10. I mean... Patriots pretty much, I mean, it's just crazy how night and day-ish. Mac Jones looked explosive and has best day of the season against the Vikings on Thanksgiving. And I get it. The Bills' defense is better than the Vikings. But how it can go from great like that to a dud. I mean, again, still you have a committee at one at offense coordinator with Matt Patricia. I mean... And Joe Judge. It's just silly. But. But yeah. the Ever since that long touchdown to Marcus Jones. Patriots. I mean, they did get a decent drive before the half, but Nick Folk doinked a 48 yarder. Yeah. Not sure. And Bill's offense just moved the ball really well. Had some decent drives. Josh Allen had another. Silly like touchdown throw when it looked like Matthew Gion 
It's going to take him out of bounds for a sack. And said he just leaps before he steps out of bounds. Throws across his body. Hits Stephon Diggs in the end zone. Josh on the Bills are now the one seed at 9-3. Steelers beat the Falcons in Atlanta, 19-16. Kenny Pickett had another solid day, you know, less, less than 200 yards passing, but Pickett is playing clean football. The defense, I mean, yes, it's the Falcons, but... The defense is coming back around. For the Falcons, Desmond Ritter needs to get a shot. I mean, I like Marcus Mariota, but you got to see what you have because... Surprising enough, the Falcons are still in the race for the division, but they got to start now. The winner of the ugliest game of the weekend was definitely Broncos-Ravens. Ravens won 10 to 9. I mean, Lamar Jackson got hurt. Um, sweet tweak. The Broncos offense. It's sad because how good their defense is and their offense is. Yeah. But the Ravens found a way to pull off at the end, 10 to 9. They moved to 8 and 4, but are now tied the Cincinnati Bengals. And with no Lamar concerning. Aaron Rodgers won again in Chicago, Soldier Field, 28 to 19. Saluted Chicago Faithful. I mean, Justin Fields first came back since his shoulder injury. Um, you know, it was 19 to 10. I will say, though, that. The vibe of the game felt different. You know, them not punching in the touchdown. And said taking the field goal to go up 19-10 was probably the fuel that the Packers needed to get back into it. And boy, they did. But Just Fields made some nice plays. He had a great 56-yard touchdown run. Good for him, but yeah. Christian Watson. Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. Has eight touchdowns in the last four games for the Packers. So, close to him. Lions are still alive. Still alive. They won against Jacksonville 40-13. 14, you know, Lions offense just kept running the ball and moving the ball well. Jared Goff had a great game, 31 for 41 for two touchdowns, over 300 yards. I mean, they moved 5-7. 
and they face a crucial game against Minnesota next week. The Jags, good for them that Trevor Lawrence's injury is not serious. But, you know, I mean, it looked like they were moving the ball well the first couple drives, but really ever since then, they just found a dud. Found a dud. Browns won in Houston 27-15. You know, you look at that score and you think, okay, Deshaun Watson must have a pretty good game. Pretty decent game back. Nope. 12 for 22, 132 yards. Including an interception, no touchdowns. They had a punt return touchdown. A fumble recovery for a touchdown. A pick six. Their only points generated by the offense was a field goal. That was it for the Browns offense. And Texans, Texans, Texans. Another stressful win, but a win nonetheless for the Vikings as they won 27-22 over the Jets. A good Jets team. What the Vikings got it done. They got it done again. They're now 10-2. You know, Jets had a couple of opportunities Play in the game. Take the lead. But Vikings held tight. And again, got it done. Yeah. Commanders and Giants tied. 20 to 20. I mean, first of all, I mean, this game felt so nitpicky. I mean, the commanders went off to a 10 nothing lead. And then the Giants came back and were ahead 20 to 13 with a decent amount of time left. And Commanders, Teo Heinke rallied back to tie it 20 to 20. And both teams had opportunities in overtime. Commanders or Giants had late for a 58 yard field goal. And Graham Gano was short and fell to a 20 to 20 tie. Both teams had moments. I mean, good for Taylor Heike. You know, again, showing you why Carson Wentz should be the backup when he returns from injury. Yeah. Eagles won 35-10 over the Titans. 
you know, this game looked like it was going to be a shootout at first. And then, Traylon Burks got hurt on that touchdown catch. And, luckily, I was able to walk off the field, but. You know, besides one other drive, Titans were unable to move the ball. So, A.J. Brown got his revenge and definitely enjoy it. Seahawks won a thriller. They won 27-23 over the division rival Rams. The Rams put up a good fight. But with less than 40 seconds left in the game, Geno Smith and the offense rallies down. And Geno Smith throws a nice game winning touchdown to DK Metcalf in the middle of the end zone. And 27-23, yeah. Seahawks back on the right foot and still in the playoff race firmly. Speaking of NFC West, the 49ers took care of business despite Jimmy G getting hurt. 49ers win 33-17 against the Dolphins. You know, Tua, I mean, after that, right off the bat touchdown, the Trent Sherfield was 8 for 20. 8 for 20 run against Niners defense. Did throw a long touchdown to Tyreek Hill in the second half. But really after that. Two in the offense just struggled against arguably the best defense in the league. And Jimmy G got hurt. But... Brock Purdy came in, did his job, 210 yards passing, two touchdowns, one interception, but command the offense, you know. The 49ers are a Super Bowl caliber roster with all their pieces. So, on offense and defense. So, if Brock Purdy doesn't get injured and just does not mess it up, I mean, they have some tough games down the stretch. They got the Raiders, they got the Commanders, they got the Seahawks. I mean, they got some tough outings, but, and the Buccaneers next week. So, it's not going to be easy, but, you know, they got the roster to do it. Joe Burrow is 3-0 for Patrick Mahomes. Bengals won 27-24 in the jungle. I mean, Joe Burrow, Joe Cool, I mean, whatever you want to call him, over 300 yards, or, might have been 286, I think, my man, but still, three touchdowns, you know, 
I mean, this game had some weird miscues. I mean, Tyler Boyd drops that touchdown. Travis Kelsey get fumbles the ball late. Then she gives the Bengals the ball back. I mean, close to Patrick Mahomes for that diving touchdown, but yeah, the Bengals held tight. Guy done. Same with the Raiders, who have won three straight. Beat the rival Chargers. So crazy how I always get one point shy of the exact score. I predicted 27 21. Final score was 27 20. But Raiders got it done. They are very much alive. Devontae Adams. Having a great season with the Raiders as you expect. With his former quarterback, now current quarterback, Derek Carr. Chargers are... Even if you take away... I mean... Their offense, I mean, still is a bit in a bind. It's just weird. Chandler Jones, three sacks for the Raiders. Three sacks by Chandler Jones. That is a day as to why they brought him in. For the Raiders. The Cowboys had quite a Sunday night. As they steamrolled. The Colts 54 to 19. Now. It was 21 to 19. Cowboys. With the Colts. A two point conversion shy of tying it up. But it was just like a snowball effect. You know, Jelani Woods fumbles. Matt Ryan throws a pick. Then he throws another pick. And it was just not good. Not good for the Colts in the second half, to say the least. Who did have a great fourth quarter as well though as Tom Brady. As season NFL week 13 concluded with another Tom Brady fourth quarter comeback. 16-3 with a little over five minutes left. And two drives. The Buccaneers let down. And with three seconds left. Brady finds Rashad White. For a short score. Extra point good by Ryan Suckup. And they won 17-16. One more could say. How was NFL week 13? Let's get into prediction time for picks time for NFL week 14. Let's get started. Thursday night football. The Raiders. Have won three straight. Can they make it four straight? 
and place themselves firmly back in the playoff race. They go to LA, one of their former homes, and you bet some Raiders fans are still in LA from the Los Angeles Raiders. Could Baker Mayfield, who's claimed off waivers by the Rams yesterday, could he play? Could John Wolford, I mean, look, they pop a good fight first the Seahawks as well as they did. You know, but they didn't get it done in the end. You know, the Rams defense is still very much there. It's just the problem is the offense. You know, I mean, you still have Bobby Wagner, you still have Leonard Floyd, you still have Jalen Ramsey. I mean, you still have studs on that defense. I mean, Aaron Donald, he missed the last game due to injury. Could he be back, but dinged up? We'll see. But yeah, the problem has been the offense. And, you know, Alan Robinson out for a season. Cooper Cup still on IR. Um, Stafford out for the time being. I mean, but I'm going to go with the Raiders here. They they know what they are right now. I think they do. And they get it done. 24. 16. In LA. To get to four straight wins. And they get it done. Jets. At Bills. Bills nine point favorites. At home. Last game was tough for both sides. So. Jets have one of the best defenses in the league. Behind Quinn Williams. Who is having a pro ball. Even an all pro level year. Um, Sauce Gardner. Is my pick for defense rookie of the year. And the majority. First the Bills. Offense. You have to assume Stephon Diggs is going to be lined up on Sauce Gardner a number of times during the game. How will that sh- shake out again? No Von Miller for the rest of the season for the Bills. I mean... I'm sure they were probably hoping to have him back for this game, but it's not going to happen. Mike White, this case, Mike White. Has been able to move the ball well. And you know. (sighs) 
Look, Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore, that's a great one-two, as well as Corey Davis for receiver for the Jets. Now, the Bills have shown that they're instituting more Devin Singletary, more James Cook into the offense. I think that balances out more for the Bills. So, if they can do that, I think it will keep the Bills defense or Jets defense for perhaps on their heels. In no way do I think the Bills cover with that defense of the Jets, but I think they just edge it out. 24 to 20. Bills get their revenge at home. Browns going to the jungle facing the Bengals. Bengals six point favorites. Joe Burrow has not beaten the Browns in his career. Deshaun Watson's second game back from his suspension. How will he look? So, Deshaun Watson didn't do a lot. He was able to do some, make some plays happen. And now the Bengals defense is much better. Than the Texans. And. The Browns won. Due to. Just. Big errors. By the Texans. We said how the Bengals have the Chiefs number, or Joe Burrow has Patrick Mahomes number. Maybe the Browns have the Bengals number. And I don't think it'll be a lot. But... There's just a weird stigma about this game. So, 23. 20. Browns over Bengals. Don't have to spend too much on this. Cowboys to the Texans. The line has moved to 16 point favorites. For the Cowboys. It was 17 but now it's 16. Either way, 28 to 14. Cowboys beat the Texans soundly. And they get their 10th win of the season. Vikings going to Detroit. The Lions, two point favorites. Two point favorites are the Lions. Now, 
In the first game, the Lions had the Vikings a bit on the ropes. And they were ahead 24-14. But Vikings came back and won 28-24 at the end. The Lions for the last month have been playing very good football. Besides the loss to the Bills by three points. You know, they've been playing some very good football. I mean, when you have a game that goes so right for you, like the Lions did, there's going to be a calm down period. So how much does it go down for the Lions as they face the Vikings, as the Vikings held off another good contender in the Jets? They just keep finding ways to win. 